welcome back to the Transpiler video project. We're back in studio today and we're going to talk, talk a little bit about um, theory and that might sound boring but uh, let's try not to make it boring. We talk, we're going to talk about the German training scale. Um, many people have heard about it. Uh, it's um, it's a theory system that uh, comes from Germany. Many uh, many uh, people who are training dressage is training by that scale, and we're going to um, explain how we are using that scale to uh, plan our training of horses and riders. Mm -hmm. And um, also to assess. Um, the level of the horse and the riders that yes. we are working with at the yes. moment. A good thing about the scale is that, that you can see if there is a problem, uh, you you might just go uh, back to the the point before, the lower point on, in the scale, mm -hmm. and, then, and then you can reassess the level of the training and uh, make sure that everything is okay on that step before you go back to the step up. Uh, yeah. So let's talk about the different steps of the of the scale, shall we? So uh, we are going to list up for you how the this training scale looks. Uh, it's got six steps, and uh, it starts with I like to say at the bottom. It starts with rhythm, uh, then we go on to looseness, and uh, from looseness we move on to contact. It's the three first parts. They, they, we will give them a name of their own afterwards. Next up is impulsion. Then we get, after impulsion, we get straightness. And then at the very top, at the pinnacle of the scales, we find collection. And those are one other separate part. It is a quite easy way to separate these into two different groups. The first group, in the, fir the, the first group phase. we call the correction phase, yes. Mm -hmm. That's where we correct all the faults of the rider, the stiffnesses. We find out what we can and can't do in terms of uh, coordination. We find blockages. The same thing is true for the rider as well. We correct all that. And that's the first phase, the correction phase of the skills. Then we come to the second phase, which is kind of... A little bit harder to find a good word for, but I More the advanced. I like I like to to call it the capacity part. Mm -hmm. So the top three things: impulsion, straightness, and um, collection. Collection are all um, are all capacities that you can increase. It is uh, it's like uh, increasing your strength or your speed. Uh, it's the same way with these three things. You increase the capacity of the horse by increasing the um, impulsion, the straightness, and the collection. A lot of people that have musical background, um, they have an idea about the rhythm. An idea, yes. Mm -hmm. But what is rhythm when it comes to horses and movement? It's... Um, is, uh, many people know that there are different rhythms that the horse moves in. For instance, in walk, there is a, a four beat rhythm. Yeah. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. And then they know that there is a... The trot a, is supposed to be two beat. Yeah, it's supposed to be. Yeah, one, two, two, two. And the diagonal uh, legs are moving in rhythm with each other. Yeah. And the canter is three beat. One, two, three, one, two, three. Uh, three bit with a pause. Yes. He, he's an, got a musical background. Uh, it's actually a four beat. Yes. But it's, uh, it, and that pause <coughs> is really important. It's one, two, three, pause. One, two, three, one, two, three. It's not one, two, three, one, two, three, huh? It's, that's not the it's not counter the rhythm. Words. No. Yeah. So, uh, when we're talking about rhythm, it's, it's something that we, um, we we'll look at when we when we're judging if the horse is moving correctly. Yep. If there is something wrong in the horse, some 
uh, we can often see that the rhythm has be has gotten wrong. It, for instance, that the the walk doesn't say one two three four one two three four. It says one two three four one two three four. Or so there is some sort of pacing. irregularity in the rhythm. Yes, that is um, one of the first things we'll look at. The, the regularity of the strides in the different gates. It's one of the most important things we're looking at, and uh, it gives you a lot of information that you can use to to um, improve the horse or take away faults, if you like to call it that. Mm. On to the next step on the scale. It's uh, step two. It's called looseness. Um, in, in English. In English, and it's yes. not very uh, precise. In German, it's called. Uh, it's a. It's a word that describes the ability to let the uh, movement flow through the body without any constraint, and that's. Uh, uh, I think it's 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 important to explain that that whole sentence because um, it's not looseness that is. Um, important loose is loose the difficult part of the when you explain this is uh, that you have to understand that you could be the horse can be really collected really powerful really running at full speed and still be loose yes because it is not sort of working against its own movement and at that this stage it's important to find out where is the horse tense uh, is there places in the body that is so tense that horse actually can't move correctly. Uh, if the shoulders are tense, if the withers are down, if the whole neck is sort of in between the shoulders, and hold, uh, the horse holds it there, not um, by its own will, but because of the habits and the whole, you know, it's it, the stiffness of the muscles are, are keeping the horse in this position. It's impossible for the horse to move elegantly it has to sort of be able to stretch out of its withers and st uh, or the withers out of its shoulders and uh, the shoulders needs to be able to move freely uh, the back needs to be able to swing uh, the hind legs must be able to bend uh, when when the the horse is stepping down um, with the hind legs Yep. Um, all all these things are really important and they're really important to, to find out and fix it before you start um, doing the advanced stuff that's why it so, comes so early in the, in the scale <coughs> point number three in the scale is contact and uh, many people are surprised when we say that because they think that contact is the first thing you do. You pick you up the reins. Pick first. up the reins. Yeah, and of course you have to pick up the reins to give uh, um, signals to the horse. But uh, before you have the correct rhythm and the looseness, the horse is not able to take the contact correctly in its its in its uh, the horse's end. Then uh, you. It's going to be pulling and hard and perhaps no contact at all unless the horse is able to move in a correct ryth rhythm and uh, with looseness. Mm -hmm. So that's the reason why we often let the riders ride with without contact and just to, to let the horse uh, seek for the contact. And many people are afraid of the contact, aren't they? Yes, I yes. They they think that contact must uh, you know with with for instance uh, especially the rain contact, um that if the horse has a contact with a, a rider's hand, then it must be hard, it must be something wrong. That uh, uh, the the bit is they're a little afraid of the bit contact because it seems really really as an har a harsh thing. To hold on to that metal thing in the horse's mouth. It is. Um, it, um, it is one of the most uh, easily misunderstood things about riding at all. It, um, and it is that the bit is there to force the horse. This is not true. You can force the horse to do a lot of things with the bit, but this is not the aim of any good rider. Nobody wants to force the horse yeah. to do things. I hope. Uh, and. Uh, 
It is also interesting when you look at and when you think about oh having that metal thing in your mouth is probably it's really hard, isn't it, with the hard thing in contact with your mouth. <laughs> it doesn't necessarily hurt a lot. It depends on the hand holding it, I guess. And this is one of the most important things we try to to um, uh, teach is the wrong word, perhaps. Um, we try to spread the uh, understanding of different ways to come at contact. Mm. Um, many people start at one end or another, and it might be that they all have the same goal. This is very important to to be open for these for these different ways of doing it, and. Um, the way we are looking for it is through this German scales, mm. training scales. Mm. It's the way to towards contact. Yeah, to get the horse to go to the contact softly. Then if the horse um, is in balance and uh, the two points of rhythm and looseness is there, it's possible to ride with a soft contact. All right, so uh, we are moving on to the second part of the training scales, the top three pieces, which are impulsion and straightness and collection. And we're going to talk a little bit about each of those as well. And um, I feel that at this point, it's important to come into um, a concept that, that we have been talking a bit about uh, as regards the training scales. This whole thing is quite, um, what was the word? Abstract. <laughs> <laughs> abstract all these all these um, uh, different expressions like collection or, or rhythm they are very abstract it is really really difficult to pinpoint it and put down in in numbers and words what impulsion is or or any of the other pieces of this of the training scale so as this series move on uh, we will try to give you a good way of relating the different pieces of the training scale. We try to relate everything to um, physical things that you can see and understand. Or if that is impossible or if it isn't um, fulfilling for this piece of the scale that we are going to talk about. Uh, we will also relate it to whether it is the nervous system or if it is uh, something that has to do with the with the conditioning of the horse or the strength or we will try to make this as clear as possible so it's uh, easy for everybody to understand what we are talking about when we relate to this this list okay we are at impulsion um, the Germans call it Schwung mm -hmm. which is of course not possible to translate not into Norwegian not into English it's just this weird weird <laughs> Germans um, so, impulsion, it is, you can call it something like excess energy, that when you're moving, you should be prepared to change speed or direction at any time. If you have impulsion, you are prepared to change speed and direction at any time, without losing um, the ability to change the pace or the gait or any of those things. So you have to have quite a bit of agility, which is a word we're going to come back to later, I believe. Um, and at the same time, Im or impulsion is a very, very important part of agility. If you imagine the hind leg as, an, as a pendulum, the, the perfect movement of the hind leg is that it, the pendulum moves as much forward as it moves backward. Mm. Uh, but at some point during this, it's going to be touching down on the ground. And uh, quite often you will see that the, the leg swings forward, or maybe even far, but sometimes too short and then it touches down and it keeps staying on the ground, pushing off. If it, if it pushes off more behind that vertical line than it does in front of that vertical line, mm. then it is not impulsion. Then it is That's just running. Yeah. If it pushes off when it's in front, that means that the horse is actually sitting down more. Mm -hmm. And now this push moves the horse up forward, right? So this is um, this is probably the most essential part in my brain about impulsion. Most horse racing happens in a left-hand turn. Do you know why? 
I think it's a quite easy explanation. They are faster in a left-hand turn. Most horses are faster. It's because they're stronger in that side and they push off harder with the left hind leg. <clears throat> that makes it easier for most horses to go in a left-hand turn. But if you try to bend your horse to the left, you will find it's really difficult, especially if you're collecting the horse at the same time, because collection and bend sort of add on top of each other. So to the left, the horse tends to be stiff but strong at the same time. And to the right, the horse tends to be sort of soft but a bit lazy, which often creates blockages in the horses so that you feel like you can bend a little bit but then you can't just can't get any further to that side while to this side it's always a little bit rigid feels like bending a little bit uh, a tough rubber band <laughs> to, to to that left side most often of course this may differ quite a lot of the time people believe that it's due to their own crookedness that the horse is crooked uh, i tell people then that i'm left-handed and my horses are crooked the same way that almost everybody, every other horse is crooked. So, um, and also I, I tend to think like this, okay, if you're sitting on a horse um, and you want to think about whether you influence the horse more than he influences you, you have to think about these two factors. They are very important. The horse has all his legs on the ground, so he has a support somewhere. You have no support other than the horse, so whether you or the horse influence each other more, I would say maybe the horse influences you quite as much as the other way. The other thing is that your weight in relation to the horse is for most riders. <laughs> you are quite a little thing on top of that big horse, right? And even if the point of being on a horse for us is to change how the horse moves, or not the point perhaps, but since we have made the decision to sit on the horse, we also need to change how it moves. That means that we have to be an influence, and you can be an influence, but that comes back to all the other things that we always talk about, so we shan't go there. We shall go back to this straightness thing, which is so difficult and important at the same time. So we need the horse to be as stiff, or you can call it, say it the other way, as flexible, and as strong in both sides as the other. Most horses are not, and then you find crookedness. Even if you can keep the reins at the exact same length, the horse might still not push off the same with this hind leg as it does with that hind leg, and then your horse isn't straight, no matter how short or long your reins are, or how straight or not they are, or if you sit on this side or the other. If the horse doesn't push off the same with both hind legs, and flex the same in both hind legs. You cannot have a straight horse. It's really difficult to pinpoint what true collection is. And mm, we, we shall start with one exercise. We shall talk about one exercise. And, and if I scare off the, the, um, the competing crowd, uh, please bear with us. I will get us onto the right track in, in just a little while. Bear with me, please. Um, the exercise is the, the exercise of ultimate collection is called levade. Mm. And it's kind of funny that it's called levade because levade means upwards, right? Mm. Elevate, Lift, lifting, lift yeah. or elevate. While what hap actually happens in the levade is that the whole horse shrinks. Mm -hmm. and becomes very, very small. Yeah. They describe it like this, a perfect levade, you know, the, the levade is when the horse stands on his hind legs and balances. And a perfect levade, they say, the horse needs to sit down so much behind that the withers become just about a hand's breadth lower than when the horse is standing up. And even if you do manage that, you can still manage to have the back sagging through and all sorts of different faults like that. But we, we will just stay with this in, in our heads, the perfect image of the levade with the horse in that perfect little, you know, sitting down behind, round, at what all the curves are like round this way. Mm. And then the horse sits there and it's got all its weight on the hind legs. But only if it holds, if it moves up, down, it doesn't need to have all the weight on the hind legs. 
then uh, the, 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 we move into the world of physics where we find uh, where we find that this uh, energy has uh, changed uh, and now it's called what do you call it potential energy yeah, or yeah. whatever something so like that so the horse just throws the in the weight up in the air yeah. and, and it falls down and it's yeah. falling back down like yeah. a rock so that is not sitting on that, that no well. that's not collection mm. so we need to have an element of this in all our collected exercises and now we shall bring it straight back to competitions if you are at the halt and you're supposed to move forward at the walk, which leg is, needs to move first and why? That's a good question. It's a hind leg. Mm -hmm. Must be. And if you want to have any semblance of collection in your in any gait you are moving in after this, you must have a hind leg move first. And we're straight back to rhythm. Mm -hmm. And our training scales just became a wheel. It is not a ladder that just ends at collection. But at the moment you get to collection, you understand what rhythm is. Well, this was a short introduction to the German training scale. Um, it's of course, um, we have a lot more to say about this stuff. And it's hard to be exhaustive. Yeah, it and it's, to it's also complicated to understand. Yes. So we're going to um, explain more about each of the points uh, in, in more videos in to come. Videos, yes. Uh, yes, and um, I, I guess also uh, we are going to, when we make other videos, we will uh, refer to the to the training scale. Yeah, definitely. And yep. also uh, how we are, for instance, as you said, that we are, it's, we're using it as a spiral, mm -hmm. not actually as just a staircase that you come, in, come to the top and then come you Come to finish. the top, go in the door. Yeah. Everything then you have fine. to start again. Then it, 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 is there uh, enough um, looseness in my collection, for mm -hmm. instance? Yeah. Have yeah. I got rhythm still? Oh, no. Got rhythm. So yeah, we're going to go come back to that. And if you've got questions. If people have got questions, what are they to do? They are to either ask us in the comments down below. Uh, they could go to Facebook or Twitter and find us there. Um, and um, other than that, I don't think there's much more to say than uh, thanks a lot for watching. And uh, we're looking forward to having you back later. Bye.